Your hair looks wonderful. Thanks. And you're speaking perfect Spanish, must have spent some time in Panama. I gotta tell you that you're absolutely glowing. All that fishing and relaxing that you're doing is showing. Uh, I might take up rowing, pop up looking Samoan. Bit of action for you. Right. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my garden. It's Sunday sessions. We're here again. Uh, today we are doing a little squid dish. Uh, squid, wild garlic, a couple anchovies, young basil, uh, a couple blistered tomatoes. Summertime vibe, you get me? Um, so firstly, let's start off with some squid, right? Been to the fishmonger, shout out Steve Hatz, um, and picked up some beautiful squid, yeah? Got me to clean it. So, all we're gonna do is I like to take the end off first. And then in here, we've got a little slit that our knife can run straight down and found our open, yeah? So, also, that was very satisfying. I sharpened my knives yesterday, so it's always good to have a really sharp knife. Then, we're gonna scrape this gunky shit out. And then we're gonna go like the most famous of MCs, crisscross. Miggity, 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 Mac Daddy. Do you remember that tune? The two little kids, and one of them apparently died. They were called crisscross. I think they were called crisscross. If they weren't, that was. Um, so I like to do like little diagonal, but I like to do loads of little slits, right? This is with a butter knife. We don't wanna go all the way down. We're just making surface area, right? So this is gonna allow our dressing to creep. It's gonna let our squid do its thing on the barbecue and not curl up straight away. We just wanna cause a little bit of difference, right? So that our little marinade can get in, yeah? So we've gone one way, made all these little scores, yeah? Pretty, right? And then we're gonna go in the opposite direction, which is which way is the opposite direction? That way. <laughs> Bear with me. That way, and then we're gonna do the same again, right? We're just gonna score. And as we score, we're making these lovely little diamond shapes, right? And if I lift this, you'll see we've just made a little pattern, yeah? Nice little pattern. We're gonna do this with all of our squid, but first, Let's portion this bit. So we want mouth sized pieces, right? You want to be able to pick up a bit and eat it. So I'm going to go into three, then into six, right? So we've got like little bits of squid and these will like hit the fire and then curl up and be delicious and crispy. I'm going to set this onto a plate. We're going to dress this in a sec. I'm going to do the rest of the squid. These tentacles, right? I like to keep whole, just bang them in onto the plate, they'll get dressed as well. And I'm just gonna smash out the rest of this squid. Also, always make sure that you're scoring the inside of your squid, because if you're doing the wrong side of your squid, it just fucks up. So make sure you're scoring the inside. So you split it, open it, then score that bit. Yeah, don't score the other side, it doesn't do anything. Squid, top off, yeah? Little groove just here. See this little groove? See how I can manipulate it so that there it's not sitting right, but then when I do that, it's flat, it's like fold, right? So because I'm left handed, I'm gonna turn this back on itself. And then just with the very tip of my knife, all the way down, right? Straight in, out she comes. This one's not really got any gunk in it. And then score. Score away. I fucking love a sharp knife, man. It makes me feel so important. Makes me feel like the, the number one sushi chef in the restaurant. My knife's sharp. I do what I fucking want. Anyway, that's the squid done. I'm just gonna rinse my knife off. Little bottle of innocent smoothie, some water in. That's the washing up. Right, so. I don't wanna use loads of different flavors on this squid, right? I just, I wanna, I want the squid to be the main star of the show, but I want to give it little accents that a compliment, a compliment, a company 
uh, a compliment. Compliment. <laughs> I want to give it a little flavours that compliment the rest of the dish, right? So we're thinking anchovies, we've got basil, we've got wild garlic, we've got tomatoes. So I want a few more things that are like Italian that lean that way, right? So I'm going to go on. These are raw fennel seeds. I haven't toasted them. Big sprinkle. Now they're going to hit the fire and go aromatic and give us little pockets of flavour and like differences change. And I quite like keeping the seeds whole so you get that little crunch, right? There's a change of texture. I've got some garlic. I don't want to go heavy on the garlic. I don't want like, woof. I don't want a massive bit of garlic, right? But I want a little sweetness. It's going to give us that little bit of mm, yum, 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 yum. Do you know what I mean? So we're going to grate. I'd say for this much squid, this is free squid. I'd say two cloves of garlic, right? On a microplane, do it in a pestle and mortar, grate it, chop it, make it into a paste, whatever, right? Here, we have two bottles of olive oil, right? I've been to the River Cafe because I'm a bougie fuck and I got some really nice olive oil on the house. They gave it to me because it was my birthday. Thank you, the River Cafe boys. Thank you very much. You all need a finishing olive oil and a cooking or marinating olive oil, yeah? So this bottle's about £12. I use it for cooking. I also use it to dress salads because it's, it's a versatile olive oil. The supermarket stuff like the Filippo Berrios and stuff like that, if you dress your salads with that, you're not going to gain any flavour from it. You need to look at olive oil as another one of your seasonings. It's not just fucking food lube. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's levels to flavour. There's grassiness, there's artichoke, there's like summertime, there's spring, there's olive. And you need to know what a good olive oil brings to the table. So I'm going to use a decent olive oil to carry this marinade around. Yeah. And don't be scared of olive oil, man. My dad puts olive oil in his ears when he's got an ear infection, fam. Like I come home one day, my dad was heating olive oil on a spoon like a heroin addict. He was like, pour this into my ear. We, like, us Mediterranean people believe that olive oil cures all, isn't it? Um, good bit of olive oil. I'm not going to let this marinate for long because it doesn't need it. Like, it's not going to penetrate or break down the flesh of the squid. This is just to help carry and have it around, yeah? Also, the olive oil is going to give us smoke on the barbecue. So, if you put this squid on the barbecue with no olive oil and just with the garlic and the fennel seeds, you're not creating the smoke that you need in order to have that barbecue flavour, right? So just massage this through. There's little bits of fennel seeds. Everything's together. And look, it's, it's not drowned. Do you know what I mean? There's no, like, puddle of olive oil on the plate. The US don't want to invade. We've just got enough olive oil to carry all the flavours, right? This fucking smells great already. Delicious. Um, sun's slowly creeping in. It's one of those dishes that... I want a glass of white wine, I want to sit, I want to eat all ingredients that are fucking thought about and in season and delicious. And pretend that we're in like the south of Italy, but we're in a garden in fucking North London, isn't it? Um, I'm going to go wash my hands, I'll be back in a sec. Right, get the ball the old flip. Now, I've got these really beautiful, these are called tiger tomatoes, right? Because of the stripes, they've got little green stripes that go through them. They resemble a tiger, right? These, although they're great raw, biker gang, although they're great raw, I'm going to blister them over the fire, right? So we're giving it another level of flavour. So they're going to go from like naturally sweet and acidic to like deep and sweet and like a little bit of warmth and the seeds and the juices are going to spread through our dressing, right? So I'm just going to cut these in half. Tomatoes, we're going to give them a little bit of the good stuff. We don't want loads. Again, to create smoke, to create flavour, to spread around. And then all tomatoes need fucking salt, right? And then this, yeah, just as is. Olive oil, salt, tomatoes. In a steel sieve. Don't use a fucking plastic sieve and then message me. I'm like, burnt my sieve. Just there, on the barbecue. Yeah, gonna let it blister, it's slowly gonna tick away, we're gonna warm them through. We want a little bit of char to give it that like sweetness and depth. Let it do its thing. Wild garlic, yeah? It's one of those ingredients that chefs all congregate around and fucking wank each other off. Oh yeah, wild garlic, ah, oh, wild garlic. For some reason, wild garlic season 
is like the one time that chefs are all like, let's make a million things with wild garlic in it. I managed to find some in my nan's garden. Like, I don't normally go out and fucking be like, oh, I did forage once. I went to Aldershot Park and picked some wild garlic. It was a long thing. The man then went on it. Uh, we were doing drugs at the time, but it's fine. Um, I picked like a handful of wild garlic out of my nan's front garden, right? Um, and this is like... It's a subtle garlic flavour, right? But it's not as fierce and as punchy as you expect garlic to be. So when you break it, there's definitely a garlicky flavour. But the stalk, I'd say, was where most of the flavour was. You need to think of it a bit like a coriander. All the flavour's in the stalk. So we're just using the very tip. Can you hear me? The guy's drilling again. Um, we're using the very tip where it's like subtle and like carries. But like... It's not one of those ones where you're like, oh, I don't like raw, raw garlic, so don't, I'm not going to eat wild garlic. I think you can get away with just using it as like little drips and drabs. Um, if you do forage loads, make a wild garlic butter or a wild garlic pasta, a wild garlic pesto. Treat it as a herb. Some of these are wilty and shit. They've been sat in the sun with me and George. You need a good few, right? Just like that. So I'm just taking the stalks off. Our summers are normally shit, so wild garlic season always depends. So like, if after this video we have a wet patch for like a week, we'll find more wild garlic. But if it continues to be like dry British sun, summertime, you probably won't find it. Um, but also, if you go to a restaurant and they've got wild garlic on the menu, which at this time of the year they probably do, just be like, hey boss man, let me buy five bits of wild garlic off you. Um, someone will hook you up in it, if not, I'll give you my nan's address, go pick the things, you get me? Tomatoes are blistering, I can, I can hear them hiss. I'm just going to poke round and have a little look. Little hiss, you see how we've got like a little tinge here? It's starting to warm through. They're no longer like solid, they're starting to break down. There's like a sweetness in the air, the dog's smelling George's balls. Um, we're going to pull these to one side now, so we don't want to cook these to fucking shit. We just want to warm them through, change the character, right? Because we've got raw tomatoes and cooked tomatoes in this dish. <laughs> the dog's pissing right under the table. There's an entire garden. And the dog's decided to come piss under the table because he's pissed off. Bitch ass. Yeah, you, bro. Why have you pissed there? King, bro. All right, um, these tomatoes are done. We're going to get our squid onto the grill. Right, so I've tried to lay my squid score side up with a nice bit of salt. Squid goes down. You want your barbecue smoking hot, you want a one count. Um, you want your squid to go on and instantly start cooking, right? Um, the longer the squid sits, the more opportunity you have to burn the fennel seeds or the squid to overcook. So we want to go on hard and fast, as quick as possible. I put my squid down, didn't touch it. You've just seen the visuals of it going like this, right? It's now time to turn over. So, I'm gonna go with this piece here. Fuck off, son of a bitch. Deep caramel, and like, you've got the sweet smell in the air from the squid. 
the fennel's starting to blister and it's giving us like aromats. Just beautiful bits of grilled squid, man. For me, this is like very much holiday. That bit can fuck itself. Very much holiday smells and flavors. I like to go hard and deep on squid. Like I like these little bits of caramelization, a little crispiness, a little bit of texture, right? So, the white bits from the tube, now that I've turned over, 30 seconds, right? It turns, it's done. I'm gonna rest it in this little sieve that the tomatoes are in, just while the tentacles continue to cook off. The tentacles need a little bit longer. There's more meat and body in the tentacle. So we just need those to have a little bit of extra time, right? Tentacles are on. I'd say another 90 second on these and we're good to go. Muy caliente, por favor. But yeah, delicious, yummy, crispy, tasty, summertime. A little bit salty, not gonna lie. Here. Nice. I'm getting the, the nod of approval. Um, fresh squid, no fucking frozen bag bullshit. It looks like condoms. Fresh squid, this is from Cornwall. Um, Steve Hatch on Essex Road. There's loads of great fishmongers. Google them, find out. Nine times out of 10, a restaurant that you like that serves fish will give you the name of their fish supplier. Support your local dealers, eat good fish. Eat sustainable British ingredients. Yes, it costs more money. I'm not going to lie to you. Inflation, the war, all this shit that's going on. Price of food and vegetables has gone up. But I'm not telling you to eat like this every week. I am telling you to. No, every other week I'm telling you to eat like this. Once in a fortnight you can afford to be like, going to pop down the fishmongers. And just don't fucking throw barbecues for 10 people. Have a two-man barbecue. Have you and your girlfriend, you and your boyfriend. They, them. Do you know what I mean? Do what you need to do. And just have a little two-man ting, two-women ting, whatever. Um, I don't often throw barbecues for loads of people anymore because it costs so much fucking money. Uh, that's all of our squid. Delicious, beautiful, blistered, amazing, flavoursome, tomatoes, yeah? Give this a little run around. So now already, these little blistered tomatoes are going to do their thing. Those little bits of juice that's still in them. It's just going to run around our squid, isn't it? Squid. Let's go. Right, so while this squid is still warm, I'm going to go in with like three quarters of the wild garlic. And that's just slowly going to like wilt off of the steam. That guy's drilling. There's nothing we can do about it. It is what it is. Just give this a little, give this a little stir. And the wild garlic will start to wilt, yeah? I'm going to put this all into this bowl and then we're just going to dress it lightly we're not going to do anything fucking super special or anything like that but what i do want is a really beautiful tomato right this is what tomatoes look like when you go abroad this is the tomato they'll put in a cheese sandwich yeah not our stupid tomatoes just nice wedges of tomato right look at that look vesuvio the americans call them hillbilly um just fucking great tomatoes. Little bite-sized pieces, right? So now we've got sweet in here, we've got garlic, we've got fennel, we've got blistered tomato. This is gonna give us a level of like vibrancy and acidity and for me, I fucking love a good tomato, bro. Like, it's one of the next tattoos is a good tomato tattoo. Right, that's in. Tomatoes are desperate for salt. So now we're gonna season these tomatoes. We're gonna add a splash just a little bit on the tomatoes themselves and they're gonna bleed out their juice, right? This is creating a little dressing in our bowl. Here, I've got some anchovies. I'm just gonna tear in like three anchovies. Now, I've got some young basil, which is basically, if you buy a basil plant, the young basil is the ones that grow nearer the bottom, really small, quite sweet and delicate in flavor, not as punchy as a big leaf. And then, we're gonna olive oil the whole thing. This is the good finishing oil now, right? So this is like pepperiness, artichoke, grass, olive, those kind of flavors. Season the whole thing. Give it a little toss. So it's like a warm squid salad, right?
beautiful Italian lemon. I'm just going to go some lemon juice over the top. Bring that acidity back. And then to finish, just want a couple nicely chopped chives just over the top like that. A little whack of chili flake. And then again, with this beautiful River Cafe olive oil. And that, ladies and gentlemen, squid salad. Call it a squid salad. Squid and wild garlic, squid wild garlic tomato. Squid young basil wild garlic tomato, chive, pulby bed. Just the kind of shit if I had a restaurant would be on a menu. I don't have a restaurant. Don't know if I want a restaurant, ladies and gents. Um, but yeah. Take that to a fucking barbecue and see if people are like, wow. How the fuck have you managed that? Easy. It's all about sourcing brilliant ingredients. Really nice tomatoes, squid from Cornwall. Dress it, get it on a plate. Bring some bread along, dip the bread in, make like a little bruschetta with it, like, bruv. It's the kind of food that I like to eat, man. Got two forks and I'm ready to go. I'm actually salivating, I wanna fucking eat it. But for me, bro, this is the kind of food that I like to eat. That's really annoying, but I can get over it knowing that we've got crispy, sweet, salty, garlic, acidic, vibrant. I'm gonna go a little squash with a bit more lemon on top just because I know it's all things that need each other, you know what I mean? We all need each other, man. Gonna go in for the kill. I want a bit of tomato, a bit of squid, a bit of anchovy, a little bit of blistered tomato here. You see the way the blistered tomato is like crept into this sauce in the bottom? A little like ready number. Fucking great, bro. <laughs> right. You've got different textures of tomato, so it's like deep and delicious, there's warm. And you've got fresh tomato, and like these big tomatoes, when you dress them, not only do they release their juice, but they have the ability to soak the juice up. The squids cook perfectly. It's nice, it's got a good bounce, a good chew. Fuck off, look at it, bro. It's the kind of shit you just want to put in your mouth. Lovely, delicious, summertime. I'm in the south of Italy. And this is the kind of dish that we all want to eat semi-pissed in someone's back garden. That's it. Squid. Tomato, wild garlic, dressing, nothing that special. It's about understanding how ingredients work and understanding what flavors go with what. So like, if I took the squid out of this, I could just have it on bread. Or if I took the wild garlic out, I could just use basil or like parsley. Um, cooking's all about like versatility, understanding and fucking just wanting. The want to eat something delicious will make you cook better food, bro. And the better you get at it, the more you try. The more showstoppers you can pull out. And this one for me, I could happily charge you 20 quid. And there'll be no complaints. Thank you. I'm gonna smash this off. Um, thanks for watching. I appreciate you all. Until next time. Bye.